this is a pretty tough neighborhood. What drew you here? As a physician, uh, one wants to be where there is a need for help. And there's no greater need than exists in this area, number one. Number two, uh, there's a deep authenticity here. Uh, people here may lie and they cheat and they manipulate, but, they don't, but they're very authentic about it. They're very real about it. They don't pretend to be anything other than who they are. It's quite a refreshing change. And, and anybody who works down here will tell you about the authenticity that they engage down here. Thirdly, uh, I have my own addictive issues. So something about my own internal patterns resonates very deeply with the people that I work with. I mean, I see myself in them. Truly? Oh, truly, yeah, of course. Uh, and, and anybody who works with addictions, that's true. The only question is whether they're willing to recognize that or not. Mm -hmm. um, fourthly, I just had this deep sense all my life that uh, some people suffer um, unfairly. That, that, that they suffer because not of anything that they've done, but just because life is unfair. And uh, it's a question of mitigating that suffering. What were your expectations when Insight opened its doors? I expected it to be a place where people will come and um, they will be able to be who they are without being judged and um, a place where certain common sense procedures would help protect them from some of the worst effects of, of drug addiction. For example, some people used to um, inject with puddle water in the back islands. Well, it's better to inject with clean sterile water. People would inject sharing needles. It's better to inject with a clean needle and then throw it away safely. Um, so I expected it to serve some very common sense needs, which is what it has turned out to do. But even with your compassion and understanding, there are so many people down there injecting. So few come upstairs to you to detox. You only have 12 beds. I'm yeah. curious, how do you define success? Well, again, uh, if, if I was in charge of Canada's drug policies, I could guarantee you I'd show you a lot more success. Because I put in place institutions and structures and processes and train a lot of people into um, in, in, in dealing with addiction in a very, very different way. So the success that we have is very limited by the context in which you work. But I measure success um, if somebody uh, who already has HIV, but because of their contact with health caregivers here, we can induce them into re receiving help for their HIV. That's a success. That means that person is going to live longer and they're going to have a better quality of life, which is what doctors do everywhere. People smoke all over the place. What do we do with them? We give them inhalers and we give them antibiotics for their bronchitis. We don't deal with, you know, that doesn't take away their addiction, but it makes their lives more livable. And that's the role of medicine, is to reduce suffering. And so uh, if somebody is willing to accept HIV treatment when they need it, that's a success. Um, if somebody regularly uses a facility where they use clean needles so that they don't get abscesses that, that get seated to their brains or their heart valves or their spinal column or their hip joints, that's a success. If somebody develops a trusting relationship with caregivers who all their lives they have mistrusted caregivers because their very earliest caregivers abused them, that's a success. So there are many successes. There is also an issue of expense when you look at mm -hmm. just triage, okay? You mm -hmm. have so many addicts here. The cost of maintaining uh, this facility is, is substantial. And there are, there are those who say, well, that money could be better spent. If you've got to spend it in prevention, in treatment, in enforcement. Yeah. Uh, where you spend the health, the precious health dollar is always a contentious issue, and it's, it's, it's always a fair debate. On the social level, a lot of money is spent on fighting addictions in completely negative and totally unhelpful and demonstrably useless ways, hundreds of millions of dollars that do no good whatsoever, but we do it anyway. On the social level, this province is spending hundreds of million dollars to build a highway 
so that rich people can go skiing half an hour faster at Whistler. And then we're talking about that there's no money to support these abused segments of the population. People who are addicted because they're abused as children and they've never had the help to climb out of it. So it's a question of social priority. I'm not willing to get into the debate of where the healthcare dollars should be spent. I'm saying that as a society, if we had our priorities straight, there'd be no problem uh, providing money where it's needed. What is the essence of harm reduction? How do you, how do you define it? Oh, that, uh, for example, if a smoker comes to me with an infection, I will give them an inhaler to suppress the inflammation in his lungs, and I'll give them an antibiotic to fight the infection. I didn't treat their disease of addiction. That nothing I've done there will stop them from smoking. They'll continue to smoke, but I reduce the harm of their habit to them. And that's a legitimate medical goal. We do that all the time. So the goal of harm uh, reduction is to reduce the suffering from a certain disease process and also to reduce the harm done to the addict by the very judgmental and um, sometimes brutally negative social attitudes towards them. So reducing harm in two ways. And thirdly, to reduce the harm to society that arises from the problem of addiction. Because to the extent that there's few needles out in the streets because people are using in here, that reduces harm to society. And ha have you found in the five years since Insight opened its doors that there is a discernible difference in, in the community? Ha have some of the, the benefits that you hoped for materialized? I, I'm, not in I'm not in a personal position to say that because I'm not out there observing these um, parameters, if you wish. But the studies that have been done seem to indicate that. No studies have ever shown otherwise. No studies have shown any kind of increased harm. And all the studies that have been done, over 20 of them as far as I know now, have shown benefit, including uh, social benefit. Now. If that's all they showed, even if they didn't show social benefit, I would still say it's a good thing, because it's still a good thing to treat people well and to give them acceptance and, 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 and um, reduced harm to them personally. But the studies seem to indicate some social benefit as well. And significantly, the organizations, the merchants' organizations and, and, and so on, that we had some real severe and legitimate doubts about it, no longer seem to oppose the place. And, and, and the real proof of that is that there's no politician in Vancouver um, on the civic level who would even dream of coming out against Insight anymore. You know, both mayoralty candidates recently spoke in support of it. And the last mayors consecutively, all three of them have supported it, as has the provincial government. And, and that's a reflection of the, how it's socially perceived. And isn't that... Interesting. You have, you have acceptance and approval f from very high places, and yet you are the only facility of its kind in North America. Well, that's that's a federal problem, because the uh, the federal government is the one who has to um, provide the exemption that allows a place like this to open, and they refuse to grant that. They want to shut this place down, let alone open others. But what would it mean if inside closed? <clears throat> it would mean that there'd be that much more misery and that less help to people that most desperately need it. That's what it would mean. I would still have a job. I wouldn't work up here. I'd work somewhere else if I wanted to. Um, the people that would suffer are the users. In other words, again, the people that began life with the least advantages and the most daunting challenges would have yet another misery visited upon them. That would be the consequence of shutting the place down. What does it, what does it give you? How are you fed by this place? Because clearly you are.
Uh, I'm just trying to be... Um, I'm going to give you a glib answer to that one. Thank you. As opposed to all the other answers that I've given you. <laughs> <laughs> um, look, I came into medicine really um, for a whole host of reasons. Some of them were really selfish. I didn't know that at that time. Some of them were idealistic. But the core of it, my desire to be a physician all my life, and it's been a lifelong goal, um, has that, is that this is the best way that I can help people, that I can uh, support humanity. And that's intrinsically satisfying, whether or not one quote unquote succeeds or not. So that satisfaction does not uh, depend on success in a narrow sense. It depends on my knowing that I'm doing my best to help people that most need it. So honestly, that's the most satisfying thing about this place. Apart from that, I work at a place where I'm appreciated, where I'm respected, where I like the people that I work with, I like the clients that I work with. These are really likable people when you get to know them. Tremendously likable people. And so um, it's all benefit and no, no deficit as far as I can see.